All right, guys. So in today's video, I want to be focusing on the crazy bear run that we're having right now. You know me. I really don't like to talk too much about pricing and speculation. That's not really my shtick. I'm more or less into building startups and focusing on technology. However, I do find it amusing all these newbies who are coming in the crypto space going crazy because there is a bear market right now. There's a couple of things that teaches you. One, they're not real investors. Number two, they have their emotions too much tied to their money. And number three, they're not really looking at the long-term projections. And that's the main focus of our talk today is I want to be talking about long-term. Now, there's a term in the crypto space called huddling. Really, if you do have a second, I do recommend looking at the history of the term huddling. It was a teacher, I think it was 2014, during the bear run. He was drunk and he was on Bitcoin talk forum uh, and he misspelled hold to hodl and he's like, I know I misspelled. Anyways, check it up. It's fucking awesome. Now it's in, in history books. Uh, but that being said, there's a couple of things I do want to talk about. So first of all, I don't understand these people who are complaining. Complaining about, oh my God, Bitcoin fell from 20,000 in Christmas down to, I don't even know what it is today. Let's quickly look up on coin market cap currently what is so today uh it's around 6900 right i'm not too sure what they're complaining about if you went back to last year around summertime bitcoin was what a couple hundred bucks give it if you went last year summertime what was bitcoin let's let, check right now if we went so right now it's april if i went if i went april 2017 Bitcoin was $1,200. So let's move to the summertime. Summertime would be right here, June. June was $2,500, right? And this is where you see the big run up happening over here. And the peak was around Christmas, December 15th, uh, at something like 20K or 19K, I forget. Yeah, it's about 20K, give or take. Anyways, most people started buying up on the run-up over here. So let's say summertime, they started buying in at like 2,500 bucks, give or take. And so they're complaining right now that Bitcoin is worth, you know, $6,000. What fucking asset class or investment can you make a threefold return within a couple of months and still now be complaining that, oh my God, it fell from 19,000 down to 6,000 right now. I don't understand these investors. They're, they're fucking demented. Uh, they shouldn't be in the space. They should not be allowed to invest. They give a bad name to investing. They give a bad name to cryptocurrency. And they should sell all this stuff if they have no, let's say, trust in the technology that underlines Bitcoin. So I want you to show you something over here. So this is the total market uh, cap since, I believe, last. So this is November 2017. And this will take us all the way back to January 25th, 2017. So this is total market cap. This is during the run up right now. And that was around Christmas and we're going down. No matter where you bought per se, if you bought around, let's say, uh, May of last year, you're up, you're up ridiculous. Like it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. In fact, there's a lot of similarities between the total market cap over here and looking at the S&P stocks. Now, I don't, I don't correlate alts or these tokens with majority of the stocks. Well, some could be similar because many stocks are penny stocks. But that being said, most of these alts are going down to zero. But I do correlate is a decentralized currency such as Bitcoin Monero that actually have a utility, have technology behind it, have developers working on it and actually have a use case for it. I correlate that to more or less as S&P charting. So if you look at the S&P charting over here for, for a moment, we look at from the beginning 1880 till now, no matter when you bought or where you bought, no matter when you bought in, you're up. Warren Buffett talks about this. He, he made a bet and the bet was up last year. He bet like I think any fund manager, like a million dollars to outperform the S&P and it didn't. So no matter where you bought, if you, if you bought in 2000, you're up. If you bought in 1980, you're up. If you bought in wherever, you're fucking up. So long-term holding position in the S&P gives you pretty good statistical yield return on a year-to-year -year basis. Obviously, there's exceptions to the rule, stupid penny stocks, companies that fold, etc. But more or less, statistically speaking, if you average it out, the S&P returns guaranteed a year-to-year year -year end. And so it's kind of a... 
interesting similarities if you're looking at the S&P. And obviously, Bitcoin's only been around here for like just underneath a decade, give or take. But if we do want to kind of start thinking the future 10 years, 20 years from now, and looking at the real utility currencies such as Bitcoin and Monero, one can only then come to the conclusion of it's fucking cheap right now. Like people complaining about $6,000. I'm not here to tell you to invest or not. All I'm telling you is to look at the numbers, look at the use case, look at the th technology, and look how early we are right now. We're really fucking early. And so people complaining that it's dropped in price, that, oh my God, Bitcoin is dead for the 200th fucking time. They're crazy. Simple as that. And so that's total market cap coming up to right now, April 11th, give or take. And it's been like, come on, man. Just in the short six months, it's gone up ridiculous. So then let's go down to total market domination. So this, this was Bitcoin obviously up over here and then down over here. This was roughly in June of last year. And that's when we had the big run over here. And then the big bear market right now, big bear. I don't call it bear. I just call it healthy correction. And we're over here. Uh, something fascinating though, if you're looking at over here, I keep on telling you, I don't believe in most alts. I think they're interesting experiments per se, but majority of them due to token velocity, token utility issues, regulation issues will go down to zero. And in fact, if you look at Willy Wu, he did this interesting chart not too long ago, which charts the majority of the alts and the majority of the decentralized cryptos. He doesn't state per se, clever of him though, doesn't state per se what is what, but one can take a very good calculated guess if you're following my mouse of what this is, right? And the rest of these clutter, clutter fucks down over here, those more or less are the alts sinking. And so what does that tell you? It tells you a couple of things. A lot of these alts behave like penny stocks. They're trying to find their place in this crazy mess. Uh, more or less true decentralized proof of work, peer to peer consensus models are considered more a store of value as opposed to these new experimental proof of stake. And we're still very, very early in the space. And so if we're going back to this, let me go forward over here. Uh, actually, we can go back to CoinMarketCap. Uh, if we're going to here, at the end of the day, we have a long way to go. Um, I've been on the technology over anything else. I'm a firm believer in we're just at the beginning and all these people who are complaining and selling their crypto and uh, doing FUD campaigns against blockchain, it's actually good. The more people to poke and prod holes into this technology, into everything that it represents, the better it becomes stronger. As they say, the honey badger doesn't give a fuck. And so that's my thoughts on all this, guys. At the end of the day, let's go back to this S&P chart, long-term holding positions. And so for me, I'm quite bullish on Bitcoin, quite bullish on Monero, bullish on Ethereum, bullish on other ones. Those are three on top of my mind right now. Uh, and so at the end of the day, Bitcoin is not dead. Cryptocurrencies are not dead. We have a long way to go and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.